All right now, Kenneth Crumpton. All right, doing what he does. Hey, Kenny. <laughs> Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Wayne. That's right, Victory Monday. Yeah. Go Browns, just the, which is why I'm wearing my brown gear. And I actually have the orange underneath that I'll, be, I'll shed this and wear later on, uh, which is pretty awesome. Congratulations, you guys. Now, also congratulations go out to Elise and her team. We're at the Cozart Base Interpretive Center. And this is a really cool facility we can safely say you guys have been working on it for 20 years just oh, to make yeah. this happen, right? Absolutely. And what is it for people who are just joining us? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> we've been able to open up an interpretive center in the only pre-Civil War uh, structure remaining in University Circle mm -hmm. that really ha helps to highlight the um, activities of activists fighting against slavery and honors those freedom seekers that made their way onto freedom and traveled through Cleveland, which was then known as um, Hope. Code that was the Hope. code name for the underground, it was a city called Absolutely. Hope. And what do you have over here, the Cozads? I yeah. see this. So in our first room, we like to talk a little bit about who were the Cozads. We're in the Cozad Bates house, who were they? Mm -hmm. uh, they came here from New England. This area leading up to the Civil War was a small farming community. Um, where a number of residents were active in the work of the Underground Railroad. So we show where they lived on um, some of the things that we know about them from their journals um, yeah. and kind of, again, where they lived in relation to what we now know University Circle is today. Which is um, so this funny. This modern, vibrant this, city. Yeah, this, it's all bustling, but this was just farmland back in yes, the day. Yes, absolutely. Is, Rural farmland. Right? <laughs> okay, what do we have over here? Some interesting uh, Yeah, tables. and here we get into some more stories <coughs> of that activism. So one of the the things we have is a map that highlights some of the um, stations and activities of the Underground Railroad Network in Ohio. Uh -huh. Ohio is said to have um, more activity than any other state by some because it bordered two states that permitted slavery and then had Canada to the north. Freedom was up here. Absolutely, yeah. yes. So if you made it through Ohio, you were home free. Absolutely. Okay, over here, interesting little tidbit uh, that started a nice little mini rebellion, right? Yeah, um, we like to highlight some of the events that took place in Cleveland that were really prominent within the national debate around slavery leading up to the Civil War. One of those things was the case of Sarah Lucy Bagby, who we believe to be the last freedom seeker um, returned to slavery, and she lived and worked here in Cleveland. Um, so a number of the activists here uh, tried to save her as her um, enslaver came to Cleveland to claim her under federal law. She was ultimately returned to slavery. Mm -hmm. And we have here some of the community response to that. Um, in this case, calling out uh, her return as a human sacrifice to the union. Wow. Powerful words. Yeah, and what's really cool is you're already getting school groups to come here and utilize the space. So I love that, love that. Yes. So cool. All right, well, we have some more stuff to show you guys. So interesting. Paige, why don't you show them that bench? There's even. Uh, a method to the madness of that bench and that pattern. We'll explain that when we come back. Okay, back to you guys in the studio.